See, in order to, to draw out the poison, in order to sop up the sickness that rots us, the sickness unto death that sits at the base of the human condition, in order to draw out the poison, Jesus had to make himself poison, poison a bull, you see? Jesus, in all of his power, the Almighty One, he had to make himself wound a bull, hurt a bull, strike a bull, spit on a bull, crucify a bull. In the most profound move of all of human history, the most profound thing that you and I could ever conceive. God Almighty, all-powerful, creator, maker of heaven and earth, made himself vulnerable. And by his wounds, we are healed. He said, you pour it all, you pour it all, you pour it all right here. God became vulnerable. Was it to his shame? Should we be embarrassed for God for having come down and become in Christ so we can help us? Should we be ashamed of him? You know, no other God would do such a thing. The Roman gods, they would laugh at a God like that. The Persian gods, they wouldn't even hear of it. The Mayan gods, they would say, hey, you can no longer come to our God country club if you're going to act like that, right? Because that, that's ridiculous that a God would get that low. That's silly and foolish that a God would become that vulnerable in the hands of its own creation. Should we be embarrassed for God? No. Because having done all that, nobody, nobody can match his glory. Jesus Christ descended into his humiliation. He descended into humanity. He descended into vulnerability. And being there in obedience, even obedience to a false claim, false judges, false trial, to be beaten, spit upon, and put on a cross to die. And still he remained in perfect obedience. He went all the way down into death, under death, to sop up the curse that keeps us all from God. And he went all that distance, so low, so low. And right there, where the most powerful the most powerful being that you could imagine embraced ultimate vulnerability right there. Not immediately, but slowly. Through Good Friday, through the despair of Holy Saturday, not immediately, but surely the music starts to change. Do you hear it? He's not going to lose. He says, pour it all out on me. You hold me down. You step on me. You push me down. You've hit me. You pour everything you've got. I want it all. I want all the poison. I want all the vitriol. I want all the hatred. You pour it all on me. He's down. He's under the grave. He's under the soil. He's behind the stone. Will he lose? No, the music starts to shift. And the humiliation is over. It's over. And the exaltation begins. Are you with me? Verse 5, here we go. Therefore, glory to Jesus. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. There's nowhere, there's nowhere, no so high, so low that doesn't bow to the name of Jesus Christ. That every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Listen now. None can match his glory. No one had as much to give up. No one went so low, and none can match his glory. Jesus, Jesus has already taken the punch. He's already taken the poison. He's taken all of the evil, the force of evil of all the world. He's taken it onto himself, and still he lives. He lives. And now who can stand opposed to him? No one. There's no power to go get and bring against Jesus. 
He's taken all the forces of evil on himself and he lives. This is the track of humiliation that leads to exaltation. We follow in the way of Jesus through his death and we know his life. Christ has died. Christ has risen. And Christ will come again.